All right, students, this is our last lesson for um, equivalent fractions and comparing fractions. It is lesson 18, session 3, using a benchmark fraction to compare fractions. We are on page 389, so turn there and we will get ready. Okay, first let's talk about benchmark fractions. Okay, actually... So benchmark fractions are fractions that are um, like commonly known fractions. Those fractions would be um, one half, one fourth, three fourths, one third, and two thirds. Those are all benchmark fractions. Um, and these fractions are ones that just easily help you know how big something is. So obviously you have one half, and then um, you can easily do one fourth or three fourths, and then you have the thirds. So you can easily do one third and two thirds, okay? So our focus on this lesson is being able to use these types of fractions to help us compare the size of um, of numbers. All right, Jasmine's swimming lesson lasts for two thirds of an hour. It takes her one sixth of an hour to do her homework. Does Jasmine spend more time on homework or at her swimming lesson? Okay, so we are comparing two thirds to one sixth. Well, Two-thirds, when I look at it, I know that two is more than half of three. So this is bigger than one-half, okay? But one-sixth is smaller because half of six would be three. So this is smaller than one-half. That means two-thirds is going to be my bigger fraction. But I'm going to check my answer just to be sure. First, I'm going to check it by drawing a bar model. So I've got two-thirds. And then I've got one-sixth. And it's easy again to see here that two-thirds is more than one-half and one-sixth is hardly anything at all. I can also make a common denominator. Three can easily be made into six by multiplying by two. So I can do two-thirds times two, and I would get four-sixths. Then I can compare four-sixths to one-sixth and see that four-sixths is bigger, which means that two-thirds is bigger. All right, let's turn to page 390. Another way that you can compare fractions is by using a number line, and this is where those benchmark fractions come very handy. Um, if you have a number line from 0 to 1, um, we're going to divide it up by 6 because that's the larger number um, of the denominator, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I can easily mark where my 1 half is, and then I'm going to label my 1 sixth, and then I would actually have to make an equivalent fraction to be able to label two-thirds, but we know that two-thirds is the same as four-sixths, and in this case, one-half would be the same as three-sixths. So I can easily see that two-thirds is bigger than one-sixth. Um, right here on this part, it's again just talking about that benchmark fraction and being able to realize that two-thirds, because half of three would be one-and-a-half. Um, so being able to realize that two is more than half of three, but one is less than half of six. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at page 191. Now you will solve a similar problem using one whole as a benchmark. Think about the two fractions, 11 tenths and 7 eighths. Well, if I had 10 tenths, that would be equal to one whole, because anytime you have a number on top of another number, that's one whole. So since 11 is bigger than 10, that means that 11 tenths is more than 
one whole. But over here, 7 is less than 8, so that means that this is less than one whole. So that means 11 tenths is bigger, and it says which fraction, 11 tenths or 7 eighths, is greater than 1? One one. Well, it's 11 tenths. Which fraction, 11 tenths or 7 eighths, is less than 1? Well, it's 7 eighths. Which fraction, 11 tenths or 7 eighths, is greater? 11 tenths is greater than 7 eighths, and it's because 11 tenths is more than one whole and 7 eighths is less than one whole. Use greater than, less than, or equal to to show the comparison. Explain how you can use benchmarks to compare fractions. You can use benchmarks to determine if a number is bigger or smaller than the benchmark fraction. Okay, let's go ahead and go to 392. Go ahead and complete 392 on your own. Also 393 and 394 and see how you do on those. When you're finished, um, come back and we'll take a look at them together. I'm actually going to um, skip this page, but I would like for you to do it for that extra practice. And I'm going to go ahead and go over here to 393 and go over the answers for you. But again, it would be really good for you to do this to help you um, understand benchmark fractions better. Okay, so compare 9 tenths and 3 halves. So 9 tenths, we have one whole here. That means everything here would be 1 and something. So um, 9 tenths would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 9 tenths would go here. And then the other is 3 halves. And so here's 1 half, 2 halves, 3 halves. So this is 3 halves. It's also 1 and 1 half. Which fraction is greater than 1? 3 halves. Which fraction is less than 1? 9 tenths. Write greater than, less than to show comparison. Explain how you found your answer. Because it is bigger than 1. And this one is less than 1. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at 394. Compare 5 sixths and 1 third using benchmark fraction 1 half. Well, 5 sixths, 5 is more than halfway of 6. But 1 third is less than half of 3. So this, is com this 1 is divided into 6. So we've got 5 sixths here. And 3 times 2, so it would be 2 sixths, or 1 third would be here. Which fraction is greater than 1 half? 5 sixths. Which great fraction is less than 1 half? 1 third. Show the comparison. So it would be 5 sixths. Use benchmark fractions to compare. Okay. Well, 7 tenths is more than 1 half. 5 twelfths is less than 1 half. So that means 7 tenths is greater than 5 twelfths. Go ahead and complete number 4 on page 394, and that is it for this lesson.